In this fourth video in Monopoly and Natural Monopoly series, we're going to have a look at what a natural monopoly is. Please don't underestimate this part of the specification. You can have full blown questions on this. And I have marked papers where students just seem to have no idea what a natural monopoly is and the fact that it's very different from a normal monopoly. So what is a natural monopoly? It's where it's a, an industry the, where the long run average cost curve or LRAC falls continuously over a large range of output. And the result is that there is only room for one firm to fully exploit the economies of scale available in that market. So only one firm can be productively efficient or even get towards productive efficiency. In this situation, any competition, so if you break up the market and have two or three or four firms, then they can't achieve the same economies of scale as a single firm. And so it will increase prices and increase costs. A natural monopoly is characterized by increasing returns to scale at all levels of output. So we see the long run average cost curve drifting lower as production expands. It's falling because the long run marginal cost curve is below the long run average cost curve. So it's pulling down the long run average cost curve. So here we have an example of a natural monopoly long run average cost curve where it's falling over the range of output from Q1 to Q2 to Q3 to Q4. So in other words, there are extensive economies of scale in this particular industry. So some good examples might be the London Underground. So we talked about that earlier being a monopoly. So in this case, we have one firm operating the trains in all the tube lines, in all the tunnels. If you were to have a competitor and needed a second set of tunnels between every single station, that would be a colossal waste of resources. So it would be daft to have a second firm with a second set of a network, a second network of distribution. So therefore we consider it a natural monopoly. The same with water and sewerage networks. We really don't need three or four different sewerage pipes to each and every house so that the consumer can decide which, which firm to choose for its water and sewage uh, services. We really only need one network. More examples of natural monopolies. So think about your local bus service. It really would be a waste of scarce resources to have three or four companies competing running exactly the same bus service. It would be daft to have four or five different post boxes next to each other so that the customer can choose which post service to use. It would be wasteful of resources. The same with railway and the same with electricity. So any industry that has a significant network of distribution often qualifies to be a natural monopoly. So here is the natural monopoly diagram. So we've got cost on the y axis, output on the x axis. So natural monopoly has very high fixed costs. So putting together that network of electricity pylons and grids to each house or the sewage pipes to each house, very high fixed costs. So supplying the good or service such that in the long run, the average cost may fall continuously as output increases in the long run. So we got the long run marginal cost below the long run average cost. This is quite difficult to imagine sometimes. So I'm just gonna play with the next slide, the next diagram to show you what it would look like if we had a much larger market to serve. So here are our curves as per the previous slide. If we were to extend the long run marginal cost curve, it might look like that, whereas the long run average cost curve would actually be the normal U shaped. So when we are talking about natural monopoly, we are just looking at the first part of the marginal cost curve and the first part of the average cost curve. 
So now we've put the revenue curves on this particular diagram. So we've got average revenue, downward sloping and marginal revenue. The profit maximizing output is likely to be highly allocatively inefficient because the price is significantly above marginal cost because output is restricted. So here we are matching up marginal cost, long run marginal cost and marginal revenue. And that gives us price one P1 compared to C1. We can see the supernormal profit for this natural monopoly. If, however, this natural monopoly was state owned and prices were capped at a point of allocative efficiency, so where the marginal cost equals price or average revenue, um, that would increase supply and affordability. And here we would make losses. So the economic losses are the pink area because here the average revenue or price is below the average cost at the allocatively efficient output. Now, it might be acceptable for the state to uh, accept losses from utilities such as gas, electricity, sewerage, because these are essential services. But it's just proving that with a natural monopoly, if you want to try and make that firm allocatively efficient, it is likely to make losses. We are seeing um, more natural monopolies in the economy. We are seeing the rapid rise of digital platform businesses and um, that may morph from being a business into a market. So think about very early on in when we started looking at monopoly, we looked at Google with 90% of the web search market share in the UK. Um, E-commerce, looking at Amazon, eBay, are they natural monopolies? We need to think about these. These platforms are bringing consumers and suppliers together. So it's something to leave you with and to discuss with your colleagues and your teacher. Are these natural monopolies?